Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Discovering Laguna Woods. I'm Cindy Whitney, and I'm so excited today to be speaking to someone who works tirelessly along with her team to keep us informed and engaged and occasionally amused. And boy, have they been working overtime this year. You stay tuned. I'm going to come right back, and I'm going to be talking to Elise Rothrock, who is the uh, Village Media and Communications Manager and also the Editor-in-Chief of our very own community magazine, Village Breeze. Stay right there. I'm coming back with Elise. Good morning, Elise. How are you today? I'm good, Cindy. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm very, very good. Also, it's a beautiful day. And, uh, you know, I'm so happy that you're here. But I'm going to take a little bit of a minute and introduce you by way of my first um, encounter with your work. And that would be in February of last year, when in the mail, I got this beautiful uh, magazine that had this gorgeous photograph on the cover. And I picked it up and I said, oh, this is likely going to be one of those uh, publications that has coupons and, and different advertisements in it. And I flipped through it quickly and I realized no, it isn't. It's a really comprehensive magazine. So I sat down and made a cup of coffee. I read it cover to cover. And when I was done, I had learned probably seven or eight things about my own community that I didn't know before. I saw my friends and my neighbors being featured in articles and I learned about them. And I, I, I felt connected to my own community at a time when, as it turns out, we were going to be feeling less connected than we ever were in our lives. So I want to thank you for that. My question to you is, what in your background prepared you? I don't think you had a lot of working with people in an over 55 community. What prepared you to come to this community, hit the ground running, and prepare this magazine that was really a, a, a responsible voice in the fog of COVID uh, for us all? You just have done a great job. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a 26 minute show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. Um, I have uh, almost 30 years of experience in magazine publishing. That's what I had been doing before I came to the village and to village management services. And in the scope of that work, uh, my purview included magazines from all different walks, huge, you know, different niches, all different kinds of topics uh, from pet enthusiasts to sailboating, uh, power yachting, um, you know, I, I did work with uh, engineers and I worked with uh, scientists um, to produce proposals for the Boeing company. Uh, you know, I'm not an engineer. I don't know anything like that, but I do know how to take people's words and present them to others in a way that's easily understandable. Uh, I worked on some trade publications. Um, so I'm, I'm used to bringing in content for specific audiences and tailoring it to their needs, you know, what they want to read about, what's going to help them uh, be a better pet owner, what's going to make them be a better boater, <laughs> what's going to make them run their, uh, their pet store better or be a better veterinarian. Um, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, taking information from an audience that you do take the time to learn about and kind of disseminating that and presenting it and then kind of opening up a dialogue with those readers, inviting uh, submissions, inviting feedback, you know, let us know what we're doing right, let us know what we could improve upon, things like that. So, um, you know, I'm not a veterinarian, I am not a pet store owner, I'm not a boater, I am a pet owner. Um, but you learn very quickly to change your mindset and really try to serve those readers the best that you can with the information that you have and the feedback that you get. That's important. Well, you, you surely do. And because, you know, as you well know, we have a lot of dimensions 
to uh, our lives here. Uh, certainly, uh, we have dimensions of age and interest and activity level, and you know things that people need to know. But might you know a lot of times uh, as you're featuring things about our services and our, our responsibilities as uh, residents here, you know. We didn't know so much about the, the Davis Sterling Act. We didn't know so much about our governance here. We didn't know what we got was probably an overview from a realtor <laughs> when we moved in. And we, and we really haven't uh, you know, comprehensively learned about that. But you're taking these, these things and you're putting them in these wonderful, uh, brief and succinct articles that are easy to read. And I'm gonna get into the visuals of it in a second because I, I, they just blow me away. But but you, you make everything, uh, uh, accessible to us, readable, understandable. Uh, and that takes some doing. That takes listening and asking, as you say, you you, you seek this information out from people and you and you and you bring it back to us so that we can more fully understand and participate in our own community. That's that's the whole goal. Um, a lot of the articles that we do run are suggestions from readers who do share their feedback with me. And that's very valuable. You know, when you start an endeavor like this, the first couple of issues, like you say, people are like, what is this? You know, <laughs> um, I didn't say that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this coming from? You know, there are a lot of questions involved, but you yes. know, you start to develop a relationship and, uh, let people know that you're there to, like you say, to listen and to provide them with content um, that's entertaining, informative, uh, you know, things that they can pick up and turn to the center page and, and see the map of their community or turn the page and there is a list of frequently called numbers or like you say, uh, inform people about Davis Sterling. You know, that was a direct request from a reader. And yes, of course, that's great information to share. Uh, if one person would like to know more about it, surely you know, thousands more would like to read about it as well. So that's where I'm hoping to get the bulk of our content going forward is people uh, let me know what you want to read, what you don't want to read. We did a, a brief survey recently, yes, and that was very helpful. Um, the majority of uh, people were very gracious. They gave me lots of good ideas, great feedback, uh, confirmed um, that some of the ideas were going in the right direction. A few people, um, you know, said otherwise, and that's great. You know, it's con uh, con constructive criticism is great. Positive feedback is great. It all feeds into, you know, what hopefully is a good product for uh, the customer, which in this case are village residents and readers. Absolutely, and, and sometimes I think we forget uh, that we do need to know certain things just to, um, inform our daily lives, you know, as I say, we have a, a responsibility to participate in our own community. Um, and so to, to be reminded of those things and also to be aware of the services that are provided too. Uh, a lot of times we forget that we have, um, we, we know about resident services, but social services, you know, there's, there, there's, you never know when a need will arise uh, and there's someone to turn to. And, you know, a lot of times we see something, you know, written down on a, a, a phone list, uh, but we're not quite sure what that service provides for us. So you, so you elaborate on that and it helps us to understand a little bit more in depth about the services that we have available to us. So that's really helpful. And, and the map is great. I mean, because, you know, <laughs> if I'm invited to someone's home, I have to get that out every single time because I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's extremely helpful. So keep, keep putting those in the centerfold. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Um, so, uh, uh, it's also, um, a, I'm a visual person and you have, you go to extraordinary means to make this magazine visually interesting. And, and the example I'll give is, uh, I think it was the uh, October, November issue. And you had a, a two page fold and one had a page had a raccoon and the other one had a coyote on it. And it was a story about animals and the, you know, don't feed them. And, and then, you know, we, we share a habitat. So it was, it was very interesting, but there were no fewer than eight different font styles, type styles on that, on that two page spread. You had, you have, thank you for having a large font because I don't have to put my glasses on to read the, the magazine, which I love. Uh, and that's, and everything was just, uh, you know, a column or maybe a column and a half. And it's so readable. It's so informative. There's so much packed into one small section of the magazine. And I know that's intentional. I know, I know you paid attention in your media psych class, didn't you? 
Very true. <laughs> but I mean, the, you, you're visual. I mean, there's so much visual uh, stimulation in this magazine. It's really incredible. Well, thank you. Uh, that's that's another important goal of the magazine, and and with any magazine, uh, you want to draw readers in, and one of the best ways to do that is through exciting, attractive graphics, um, different uses of font, uh, because sometimes you know switching from one sidebar to another that indicates to the reader that you know this belongs here, but it's a little bit different. Uh, and it, we do purposely choose fonts and colors that hopefully pop and are easier to read than your typical publications. You know, I subscribe to many and I'm going to be turning 50 this year. So I'm right at that age where uh, I either need to hold something far away, but um, rather I'm collecting a very nice group of cute readers. <laughs> so, uh, <Yes. laughs> No, I can I can certainly appreciate the need for that, but it, you know it's fun to look for different photos. We try to use village photos, uh, actual village photos, whenever that's possible. Uh, but sometimes, you know, a, a particular story, uh, it's it's a little bit uh, more of a con conceptual photo that we use, or a general photo. Um, so it's it's great to have stock agencies that that can provide such a wide array of, of photos specific to, you know, the 55 and older age group. You know, there's, there's a lot of great stuff out there. And, yeah. um, you know, we definitely want to make something attractive because, you know, if it's just type, small photos, it's, it's just not, not very entertaining. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we're, we're on the right track with that. And, and it's, a, it's a very uh, useful magazine, too. It really is. Uh, there's, there's so much in there that I, I dare not ever discard one of them because I know there's going to be something in there that I'm going to need at some point. And I'm going to say, uh, oh, that's right. I remember seeing that in, you know, two issues ago. They had something on that. And now I can go and, and check it out. And I, I think I told you in our former conversation, it lives very nicely among my art books. You're, you're right next to Diebenkorn and Turner. <laughs> at my coffee table. So it, it sits very nicely <laughs> in the room. And I just, I, I love the photographs. Um, you know, my question also is, um, you have a variety of uh, resident uh, contributors, people who are writers um, that we know about. Are, they, are Do you have outside contributors too, or are they, are they all uh, resident contributors? I, I have a couple. Um, one of them uh, is Jennifer Carmarker. She used to be the editor for The Globe. Yes. She's moved out of state. Um, and, you know, she's a great contributor because she has such a, a great history and a treasure trove of knowledge of the village. And, you know, she's trying to build her freelance business and uh, it, it's great. And then another writer that I use for the profiles, uh, Kim Campbell Thornton, she, uh, she was my first boss a long, long time ago for Dog Fancy Magazine, actually. And she's another great freelance writer. And I knew she would be able to strike just the right tone that, that I was looking for uh, to share news and information and tidbits um, about everybody's neighbors with each other. Other than that, uh, most of the content is generated either by myself or Susan Logan McCracken, who was our communication specialist. She joined us about a year ago. She writes quite a bit for us as well. Um, so the majority of the writing is done in-house and that comes from various sources. Some, of, some things have appeared before in the every Friday, what's up in the village e-blast. Yes. Uh, that's usually the, the what's up in the front. Uh, a lot of that information is new. Some of it is evergreen, but you, people might not be aware of it. So it's helpful to share reminders every now and then. Um, but yes, most of the content is supplied by myself or um, anybody that I can uh, get in there by hook or crook. <laughs> well, well, they're they're well written, and there's a there's a consistency that, that it's about information and it's about things that, you know, are um, are serious but not heavy. There, there's nothing in there that is controversial or something that's contentious or anything like that. It's it's really it's uh, it's. It has a broad appeal and it's interesting to us and that's all it needs to be. And I think we appreciate that too. Um, well, now you're the, you're the there, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Just sometimes there is content in there that uh, some readers don't like or don't agree with, or they do have uh, a point of contention with, and that's, that's fine. 
um, you know, I welcome everyone's opinion and everyone's uh, criticism of, of certain things that they read because every single person is different and everything they read is going to hit that person in a different way. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they let me know that, but um, that's, it's, that's always, a, always good feedback to get. Well, that's Keep the challenge on. with information. <laughs> um, it, it is, it, it, uh, it will strike someone a little bit differently than the next person, but that's okay. Um, that's, that's what we're here to do. Um, so you, you are the uh, manager of Village uh, Media and Communications, which tell us about some of the other communication um, uh, constructs that you work on. Besides the Breeze, um, our department, which is headed by Eileen Pollan, she's the director of media and communications. Uh, we do, as I mentioned, we do uh, What's Up in the Village, which comes, which comes out every Friday. And that's the latest news and updates uh, from the village and from entities outside the village, such as um, El Toro Water District or uh, Southern California Edison, um, the city, uh, city hall will send us press releases, things like that. Um, so that's that's a really great way to stay up to date on what's going on in the village and outside the village as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, village television, uh, which does such a great job of covering topics every day, featuring um, VMS CEO Jeff Parker and you know all of the different uh, residents who come on shows for interviews. Um, this day is a great source of information. Um, and before COVID, our department did all of the posters, the flyers, the announcements, the, um, the newsletters for all the different departments of VMS, recreation, transportation. Um, we do, uh, a, well, we review, review a lot of the correspondence that comes out of, out of VMS. Um, and those are our primary primary vehicles of communication. The breeze, what's up? Um, the you know we have the website, of course. Everything that goes into what's up is on the website as well. And we do have a Facebook page, and um, I'm trying to grow that slowly, <laughs> early, um, and it seems to be working. Um, I mean, I've been including a lot of photos of animals, particularly from the equestrian center. They always get the most likes and the most comments. Everybody loves animals. Yes. Um, so those are our, our, uh, the different things that we manage here in this department to communicate with residents. Well, they're, they're very effective. And, you know, a lot of times uh, people, you know, might not be online. Uh, you know, some people, uh, you know, are either going to read their news or they're going to watch it on television. So we appreciate that you have it in very, using different venues to communicate with us. That's very helpful. Um, and, and I was wondering if uh, COVID presented um, uh, a lot of challenges for you this year. I mean, how, how up to date, you, you know, I, I understand that Jeff and Lisa were on every morning doing that, but I mean, were there things that you published that, you, that were from Orange County or did it present any challenges for you this year? I'm sure it did. To be honest with you, it, it really didn't pose any challenges because all of the information that we used um, came online from the state or from the county. Uh, every day, you know, we're looking at the numbers and the statistics and always keeping abreast of uh, the reopening plan, what was open, what had changed, you know, that's what allowed us to kind of gradually and safely reopen some of the amenities um, following uh, the guidelines of different sports organizations for pickleball and uh, paddle tennis and tennis. Uh, so it, it was great that there was so much information available online. And of course, the things that we do in our department, um, publishing the magazine was not a problem. Uh, of course, what's up, that's all digital, that's not a problem. Um, we have uh, an email info at lagunawoodsvillage.com that's monitored every day and answered daily. Um, I really can't say that it posed a whole lot of challenges other than needing to stay up to speed with, you know, the changing nature of how COVID was affecting us, affecting government, affecting, you know, you know our daily lives, shopping, eating, all those different kinds of things. 
Right, because yeah. I really did appreciate that you published, you know, uh, uh, you know where to get food, where to get your prescriptions, where to, get, you know, to places that were uh, open around us. Because I mean, we found that life was became very limited very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I when it first, you know, hit, I, I was, you know, very, very, uh, I was fearful of going out, to be honest with you. And so to, to have these resources of saying, you know, here, here are some places that will deliver, here are some places you can go to safely, uh, that, was, that was giving us baby steps back out into our own lives. And I think that was very important because, I mean, there was a lot of information coming in from a lot of different sources, uh, you know, that, and, and so to have one trustworthy resource of information, I guess that's what I meant. It was like, you have to get, go through the fog of, of information elsewhere and come out with one particular point of view that you were to communicate. And I think that was important that you chose to do that. It was helpful yeah, we, to us. We've always followed the guidance and the information provided to us through the California Department of Public Health, the state and from the Orange County Healthcare Agency. Um, if it didn't come from them or the CDC, if it didn't come from any of those organizations, then we weren't, it wasn't vetted and we weren't going to publish it. So we tried the best that we could to um, remain up to date and provide the facts without embellishment or, you know, any kind of sensationalism yeah. or anything like that, because that's the last thing anybody needed at a time like this. Just Indeed. hear the facts. This is what, you know, we think you should know. This is what we think can help you. Um, you know, if, if you have any questions for us, we have frequently asked questions. We have a lot of different avenues for you to, to contact us and query us and how we can, how we can better help you. Yes. And of course we have our, um, our wonderful memorial care that we, um, that we want to, you know, let them know how grateful we are for their support in, in several ways uh, during this time. It, they're, you know, they've been there for us and we really appreciate that. Um, that was such an, a, such an amazing event. Of course, the, the avenue of distribution has changed since uh, Blue Shield of California has stepped in. Um, and the, the best venue for people to try to become vaccinated now is my the My Turn website uh, through yes. the state. But yes. Memorial Care, the, the volunteer physicians, nurses, administrative staff, they were truly amazing. Um, so many departments from VMS participated and coordinated you know, our department and transportation and security and recreation to, you know, try to figure out the best way to make that as smoothly running as possible. In Memorial Care took care of the dosage, the, the dosage acquisition. Um, they did all of the, the managing and the corralling <laughs> inside Clubhouse 7. You know, it really was an amazing event. And I can't say enough good things about everybody involved and particularly uh, village resident volunteers, uh, Diane Phelps and Joan Brown headed up a cadre of these amazing people who showed up and just did tremendous work. And, and you know, it couldn't have been done without any of those components coming together. So it was truly, truly a village, truly a cooperative effort. Exactly, it? exactly. Well, I, I, time goes by so quickly. I have one real quick last question. What can we look forward to next? More issues of the Village Breeze. Um, right now, <laughs> I'm in the, uh, the final phases of the April, May issue and planning the June and July issue. So my, my email, is, my email I like to say my email inbox is always open. So I publish my email in every editorial. Uh, people are welcome to share their thoughts, their suggestions, photos, uh, funny things they see in and around the village. Um, and I encourage people to just read the breeze, subscribe to What's Up if you haven't already, uh, keep looking for those emails every Friday, check out the website, check out Facebook. Um, we try to offer so many ways for residents to be involved and to contact us. And we would really like to you know, ex keep extending that invitation so that we can have that, that partnership and that cooperation and, you know, build the relationship together. I'm glad that you do that because I think the whole effort is so much better when people do contribute, you know? It just feels like it's a little bit, a little piece of everybody, you know, it it's really does. It's not, yeah. you know, a, a one-way conversation is, 
isn't good for anyone. You know, it we definitely no. want to want to work as hard as we can to make it a two-way conversation. Well, you certainly everybody. have. And we are we are so grateful. I know so many people that feel the same way. They love getting that magazine in the mail and sit down the same way I did and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just pour through it. And, and, and then I put little sticky notes on it. I'm going to go back to that page and that page because I want to read that. But it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's about us and it feels so personal and it feels so um, that you, you care, that you really care about what's happening with us. And uh, we, we are so appreciative. So I, I thank you so much for coming on today, Elise. And it was really nice to meet you and to speak with you about this. And I hope you, you keep up the great work because it's terrific. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. And it was my pleasure to join you today. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thanks for joining us today as we learn quite a bit about what it takes to be uh, informed and up to date about life in the village. And we thank Elise Rothrock for coming on and giving us a real comprehensive behind the scenes look at how it all happens. We thank you for joining us on Wednesday and Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. and anytime you want to on Village Television YouTube. So we hope that you're taking care of yourselves and everyone around you and be kind to everybody you see. Um, we are all going to get through this together. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Discovering Laguna Woods. Take care. Bye-bye.